So who am I? I'm Alec. You, I hope I've met most of you. Uh, hopefully doing all right on that. But I'm a software engineer at Software Mansion. And I also recently started working full time on Expo. So yeah, suspiciously no swag from either. So you have to trust me. Uh, could have been pretend I've been expensive for it, so you know. Um, cool, Carlos. So hello everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Carlos. I'm usually known as Carlos, the other one, the younger one, taller, whatever you want to <laughs> say, it's more handsome, yeah, all of that. Uh, I'm an engineer at Expense 5. I've been here for almost two years now, so I'm definitely on the fresher side of things. And my qualifications for uh, giving a talk and debugging is that I break shit all the time. In fact, I had to write my first post, uh, my first uh, postmortem uh, within two months of joining Expense Five. So yeah, uh, that was fun. Uh, so yeah, quick show of hands here. Who in this room writes code that works the first time perfectly when you test it? No, no. No errors, no warnings, no edge cases, no hands. Yeah, that's what I thought. And you guys are here, uh, are going to be here for a treat then. So uh, as I said, I break shit all the time. And needless to say, that means that I'm going to spend a lot of time debugging code. And having good debugging skills or knowing the tools can greatly improve our debugging uh, speed and also the code, uh, the code quality that we are shipping. And that is the goal for today's talk, is to give you um, an idea of the tools that are available to debug React Native applications. Uh, we're going to go over some tool options. Uh, we're going to then dive deeper into Flipper, which is uh, the tool of choice for us uh, to cover during this talk, uh, some debugging tips, and then debugging automated um, tests with Jest. So now I'm going to pass it back to Alec to uh, talk to you about some tools. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, never know which hand to pick the like microphone with. Um, all right, so tools. Let's actually talk about options here. Uh, it might feel like the ecosystem for debugging React Native is super crowded. I know that like, that has been my experience, that there's like this shit ton of different tools. Uh, you go for React Native debugging, like there's 10,000 blog articles, and every one of them is doing like a different thing. Um, and they've all, all got really confusing names, like React Native, something debug, or whatever, and they've all got the same icon. So that makes it kind of difficult, let me tell you. And obviously, like you can debug on the native level. We're not going to talk about that too much. And you can debug the JavaScript layer, which is kind of what we're focusing on. So yeah, this feels like this XKCD meme. Uh, I learned like first day of the conference, you need to put it in there. Uh, like each, each presentation needs to have its own one. But yeah, like competing standards. We've got like 14 tools. Hey, this doesn't really work for us. Let's make our own. Now we've got 15. Um, but actually, that's not exactly why this is. This isn't just random. And there's like a really good story a really good like history background behind it. So like first tool that kind of arrived is this remote debugger tool. Like it's honestly, I think it's from the start. It's just the, the like latest archive docs I found are from version 0.5. So I just went with that. Yeah, and you would have needed to like scroll a bit more. So this is like good enough. Uh, way earlier than I remember. Um, so yeah, it's this. It's like this well-known window. And the idea there is that the JavaScript code is just offloaded to your browser. Like, it's not really running on device. And it's running somewhere in a web worker. And it talks to the native side. So there's like this boundary layer, kind of like the bridge, except it's like remote debugging. So yeah, cool idea. Actually works fine, except for a couple of different gotchas. So first thing, you're not really using the runtime that you would be using, because it's like the Chrome's runtime. So it's like V8 instead of JavaScript core. Uh, which you're debugging things and you're not debugging in something that's even remotely close to your uh, your production environment. So not the best, actually. And this doesn't work with live reload, kind of painful to use, and it makes no sense for profiling. Again, you're profiling your browser. Hey, I've got my Mac M1 and my browser is really doing great. I don't see your issue with the Android low-end device. N works fine for me. Um, so yeah, we need something different. But actually, like a lot of tools, 
went with the remote debugging and got kind of far with it. There's like a lot, loads of these different UI approaches, kind of additional functionality built on top of that. Like this is one tool, React Native Debugger, just an example. This is using the same remote debugging API under the hood. Ah, what could have went wrong? Yeah, no, actually this is awesome. Uh, the new architecture is kind of arriving, kind, kind of fast nowadays. It's composed of a couple different pieces. I don't want to go into that much details because guys from Software Mansion are doing, are doing the talk tomorrow. So if I go into too much detail, you'll find me drowned in the pool. So I don't want that. So this is just gonna be like a brief overview. Uh, there's like this new runtime called Hermes. There's this JavaScript interface which replaces the bridge. It's now fully synchronous using like shared C++ host objects, magic, great thing. And there's like a new renderer. This one doesn't matter for now. Um, yeah, but we've got a problem. Hey, remote debugging no longer makes sense. Do you guys kind of see why that can happen with the kind of new architecture things? Like, we've got a new runtime, so we want to debug the new runtime instead of still Chrome's V8. You've got no bridge, so you can't really send this over web sockets. This needs to be synchronous. So we need a different solution rather than running the JavaScript code in browser. Hey, solution. <laughs> I, I guess we're at an expensive conference. Um, so yeah, we want to implement something called Chrome DevTools protocol, which is like a different idea from remote debugging. And this feels really complicated. Actually, no, it's not really. It's just like this protocol that lets you set breakpoints in your code. So it's like all your debugging features, all your profiling features, it's just an API to do that. It's like this one really, really long file, like a JSON, JSON specification. Yeah, but it's actually great. It's an open standard. It works with every tool imaginable. It's really easy to connect with. Like you can use it in Chrome, you just type in this URL, you configure like the port, and you've got a debugger. Yeah, I've, I type really slow on this clip, so it's gonna take a moment. Hey, here it goes. So this is actually connected to your app, and the code that this is debugging is running in your application. So no remote here. Yeah. So yeah, uh, basically everything that Alex just mentioned is either dead or in the process of dying. <laughs> so uh, uh, what comes after all those tools is Flipper. And Flipper is the most popular tool for debugging React Native applications. It's been shipping by default since version 0.62. And if I'm not mistaken, that's about two years old now. And it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of uh, debugging tools for React Native. So yeah, if you have a web application, you're probably gonna be debugging that on your browser, which has a lot of better tools to do uh, such things, but every now and then you encounter a situation where you wanna be debugging uh, native code, like either on your iOS or Android device or simulator, and that's where Flipper comes in. So this is what Flipper uh, looks like when you launch it. You will hopefully get it connected to your running application up here. And it has a few things going on here. You have this left um, menu here that shows different plugins. You have a main view area uh, that will show you more specific content about the plugin you have selected. And then another right-hand nav there that shows you even more specific things. And so the way that Flipper works here is just breaking down uh, different plugins so you can add plugins as you wish and write your own plugins that even if you want to do something more customized. But this is how it looks like and I'm going to dive a little bit uh, into what each of these plugins mean and what they do and what they're uh, good for. So Flipper splits this into three areas, device specific plugins, React Native and uh, other plugins that you added yourself. The first thing you'll probably see there is the crash reporter. And this is just where all your crash notifications are gonna go. So if you're running the application, performing an action, your app crashes, that's where you're gonna see the stack trace and any other notifications that may or may not be useful to you, but that's where you can find them. Then you have device specific logs, and that's the equivalent of the Android Logcat if you're using Android Studio or iOS na native logs. These are things that your device are sending um, and logging and not necessarily specific to your application. Then React Native specific plugins. Hermes Debugger, as Alec mentioned, this is just 
like Chrome uh, DevTools, and in fact, it's just a, an iframe wrapper around the DevTools. And this is where you're gonna see source maps, add breakpoints, C variables, uh, stack trace or call stack and whatnot. Logs, and which is pretty similar to the, the device logs, but this is where your console logs are coming from. So if you add any console logs, you're gonna find it here. Next, React Dev Tools. This is very similar to what um, Alec was talking about earlier. And in fact, it's, it was ported from the Web React version. And this is a good tool where you can see your component hierarchy, the component tree, also use the profiler to um, address any performance issues that you might have and whatnot. And then lastly, the plugins that you add, I just added two here that can be useful. One is the layout one where you can see the native component tree, which is what React Native will translate into native components. Uh, so you can inspect those uh, with Flipper as well. And then the network plugin, which is just a uh, basic network proxy. Uh, that's where you inspect network requests. And when I say basic, it's because that's kind of all it does. If you need to inspect WebSockets, for example, which is quite important for us since we use Pusher uh, to send a lot of our data, uh, you will not see them here. You will have to use a different tool like Proximan or something like that to uh, be able to inspect those. Um, so I just wanted to go a bit deeper into the React DevTools plugin. Uh, this is a view of uh, when, when you select React DevTools and the list of plugins, you're gonna see um, this first view here. You can, this is from our um, code base. You, you can inspect the whole component tree here, select any, each individual component. It will show you the props that the component is receiving, state, as well as like the whole um, render by tree. So like whatever components are rendering it. Uh, it can be useful to check whatever props and states it's passing and whatnot. And similarly, if you look at the upper right corner there, you have the profiler. I think Hanno touched on it uh, earlier this week when he was talking about performance. Um, you can use this uh, tool to record. So you just hit record, perform some action, stop recording. You'll spit out a flame graph. It will uh, tell you what the app is doing uh, and how long it's taking and whatnot, what's calling, what's making it re-render, and you can debug. Um, whatever performance issues you may be having on your app. Um, and then, yeah, ultimately, Flipper is a very flexible tool. You can add many plugins to it. You can write your own custom plugins. The two pieces of advice that we have here is that, one, uh, not every single plugin is going to work for your application. Sometimes it requires some other, other setup. You might have to install some other package uh, or something like that to make it work with it. And second is that not all of these plugins are well maintained. So it might uh, be broken or something like that and you might not get uh, the cover or the support that you need. And now I'm gonna pass it back to Alec for some debugging tips. Yeah, awesome. Uh, actually, shameless plug to the Flipper side. We've got a, some Flipper plugins as well, for example, for animated. Um, yeah, debugging tips. So honestly, preparing for, for this presentation, it's kind of hard to find good debugging tips because, well, it's a bit like a logic puzzle, except it's like really frustrating and you can't really drop it and do something else if, it, if you get irritated. So yeah, not really that much fun. But I've kind of collected some things that I found are really interesting for me. So hopefully you'll kind of find some of them interesting as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obvious tip. Like you start with dropping a console log here and there. And if it doesn't work for 30 minutes, then you go break out the debugger. At least that's my experience. So one quick tip is to use the different console dot something things. Like console log is fine, but you can get a lot of value from just using some of the various functions from the API. So I recommend just giving it a read, like some examples, but honestly, like those are just picked at random. So kind of go and find what works for you. Yeah, breakpoints, uh, like they're useful. They're actually very useful. And I can share some general things. So breakpoint is like a point in your program where it breaks. I know, useful uh, explanation. Thanks, Alec. Uh, it's like a stopping of the execution. And while it's useful to inspect it at deadline, you can look at the local variables like the scope of the 
function and just analyze what is happening. The kind of overlooked, well, sometimes overlooked functions are the navigation functions. So it's like this bar here, which lets you jump into functions, jump out of functions, skip to the next line. And one other benefit in React Native from experience is that it often, often lets you start debugging at a specific point. You can drop like a manual debugger statement and then go, to, go into third party minimized code or just follow the execution of some random library that's crashing for some weird reason. And they've actually fixed some very, very weird bugs just following uh, the execution from a point where I know what happens. Yeah, and some additional tips, like there's this really cool thing called a conditional breakpoint that lets you pause execution only if some logical statement is met. So if you've got a list of items and you want to stop at a very specific point, just drop a logic statement in there and it will stop. And same thing for log points, which is just don't stop, but print out this thing. And the second tip is that sometimes you don't really need a breakpoint right now, but it's still kind of a shame to remove it and need to find that place or even find that source file. So you can just mute them by shift left clicking and it will be there for you when you want to re-enable it again. Ooh, next tip, use specific tools. So, okay, kind of obvious, but at the same time, I usually try to start each problem by finding a specific debugging tool. Maybe it exists, maybe it doesn't, and then you're kind of screwed. But if it does, then it lets you really kind of save a lot of time just trying to do it manually. So for example, for debugging this performance, I found this really nice plugin for kind of measuring blank areas, measuring time to render, measuring kind of uh, re recycling time on flash list and flat list. So kind of a shout out here. Yeah, next tip. This is gonna be controversial, I've learned, but debug, debug builds, and profile release builds. So, okay, general statement, it's not always correct, but I would argue that this is like the safest option. Errors usually happen in debug, and you're kind of safe to try and find it there, but for performance profiling, where execution time matters, there's a lot of hidden components that can happen in a debug build. Um, like double renders where React makes sure that, uh, for example, your components are idempotent, so they return the same thing twice if you call them. Yeah, uh, I picked this really specific and weird tool and I thought like, okay, this slide is safe, no one is gonna mention it during the presentations, like there's no way someone would do that. And then I think yesterday this got mentioned. So what do you guys do even here? Uh, yeah, it, it's often really good to build in your own tools for just debugging and working with code. I like, for example, when I do my applications, I like to bring in the environment switcher. So maybe you want to run this release app or just like prof preview app in your local environment. And instead of rebuilding it, you can just go to the dev tools and just change that one setting. Uh, you can actually drop in items right here or just build your own. And that's actually saves a lot of time in the long run. Yeah, and last chapter of this over long story on debugging is actually profiling. What? Something went wrong. Uh, profiling memory, which is different from profiling uh, performance. Here we're going to be talking about actually things like Android ANRs, so when your application runs out of memory or just crashes. So, why do we even do that? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. Uh, I've actually feel that like the most popular one is just looking for memory leaks where application uses up more memory and then it releases it but not fully so it just climbs up over, over time and after 30 minutes your user just get, gets kicked out of this very long form they've been filling out which is not great. So one tip here is that memory is not a, not a black box and you can actually look straight into it for example, here we've just used the Flipper plugin and we took two snapshots. And like one nice thing is you can even compare them. So if you just click this drop down here and select comparison, it gives you like a difference of two memory snapshots. And then you actually see what changed, not just like the random junk that's in there from the initialization and whatnot. Yeah, example. Uh, we can create this large array. It's like, make sure to remove it after like debugging so it doesn't go to production. Like one mistake I've learned. 
Uh, yeah, you can just use memo it so it doesn't happen on every render because then you're not gonna see much, it's just gonna crash. But you can just fill it with some random values, values. and we can take two snapshots, and hey, the most largest added size here, like 20 megabytes of memory, is occupied by one array, and you can actually inspect individual elements. Oh, yeah, so this is like an example. Hey, you can take a snapshot and you can see it here, but actually you can remember this concept of this large array. I like to call it an anchor, but honestly the name is just made up. It's just like something that's large, that will, that will be like the first place in your snapshots, and you can just render it in a component, attach it to some object, or do whatever with it. So why is this useful? Example, we can check if a screen unmounts. We can probably just use use effect. That is an example, so don't go hard on me here. Uh, we can drop this large array into the schedule component. So now starting at home, we've got like this baseline snapshot. We go to schedule and we take another snapshot and we see that we've gained 20 megabytes. Not good. And then we go back to home. We clear it out a couple of times. This is kind of important. And then we take a third snapshot. So what do you guys accept, expect to see happen? Well, it depends. <laughs> yeah, helpful. Uh, so one example here is that it can depend on navigation options. Here, depending on the settings of React Navigation, the memory can either go back or the memory can stay at 70 megabytes because the screen never got unmounted. And this is actually a production bug that we found in an application causing multiple ANRs. So it's not a memory leak per se, it's expected. But the issue is that if the, a screen is large enough and you mount enough of them into a stack, this can still ANR, so out of memory error, on Android devices, usually, like on low end Android devices. So sometimes it's worth looking at what's your memory. Even though there's like no memory leak, it can still crash. So in this case, it would be better to unmount those screens after coming back, just to make sure that you've only got like one of them at once. Yeah, let's go over just. So yeah, this is the part you guys have been waiting for, automated tests. We all love them. We all use them. <laughs> I see Tim like shaking his head there. Does, not a good thing. Anyway, Jest. Uh, at Expensify, we use Jest uh, to write some automated tests for our app. And um, here's why. Jest is a default testing framework. Uh, it has been shaping with React Native by default since point 38, which, which is a long time ago. And um, it offers some good uh, tools to test our business logic and uh, test some critical uh, components to make sure that you know we're not breaking them every time that we push something new. Uh, Jest runs on a Node.js environment, and that means that there is no DOM, so we cannot really uh, test user interaction like taps, clicks, and that kind of stuff. But as I mentioned earlier, it's useful for business logic, so to test our JavaScript and whatnot. And that's what I've been using. So I'm going to cover two ways of how we can uh, debug Jest tests. One is like for people who like suffering and uh, pain. And the other one is a bit uh, easier, and it's a nice quality of life improvement here. So the first way you debug it, you can debug Jest tests using the Chrome DevTools protocol that Alec mentioned earlier. The way you do it is, is that you add a debugger statement to your code, and then you go to your terminal and you run that code there, or that, that piece of code there. And what that code does is that it's going to start a new process. The inspect BRK flag there will tell Node to uh, enable the, the debugger inspector, listen to the default port, and also break the process until uh, b just before the user code starts. So you have time to uh, attach a debugger and actually execute the test and, and look at what it's doing. Then we call Jest and we pass the running band flag to Jest telling it to run all tests serially. So, you know, for debugging, you can follow a nice logic in your, in your, in your test instead of uh, spawning different uh, child processes and running tests in parallel so you might not know what's, what's going on in your test. Uh, next, you open the Chrome DevTools like we showed in the video earlier. You will connect the debugger to it and you're going to see the Chrome uh, DevTools and you can go crazy there, like adding breakpoints and whatnot. So this is the, the painful way. Um, the, when you, you do all this, you'll hit your, your debugger statement there. You can 
inspect your variables, st uh, call stack, when, whatever you want to do there. The easier way is to use VS Code and add the Jest plugin. So you just install the plugin, you create a config file, which if you, I, probably hard to see, but a lot of the commands are kind of similar to the um, command we, we were writing in the terminal earlier. And what the plugin does is that when you open a test file, uh, the plugin is going to automatically detect the test, and it's going to add these green arrows next to the beginning of each test. And when you right-click them, you have a few options there. You can just run that specific test. And so if you are just like trying to tweak or debug one specific test, you can run just that one test. Or you can also add uh, breakpoints right in your IDE, and then hit the bug there, and Jess is going to uh, break at that um, breakpoint, and then you have access to uh, your variables, call stack, and all of that. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys so much.